Tesla recently hit a trillion dollars in market cap. It took them 15 odd years with many ups and downs to get there. But we can all agree that Elon Musk has built a once in a generation company. However, one fact that is rarely spoken about is that for the longest time, Tesla's biggest revenue stream wasn't putting consumers in the Model S or the Model X. It was revenue generated from the sale of environmental credits. This was their fastest growing revenue line post the global financial crisis. Just for context on scale, as of quarter three of 2021, they realized $400 million from the sale of these credits. It's only around 5% of its revenue today. On a percentage basis, this number may seem trivial. However, during its early days, while they were innovating, these environmental credits gave the company a much needed revenue stream to continue its bold experiments. What if we could enable the same for innovative businesses and individuals that are enabling the transition to a greener future? Ones that are pushing the needle on emerging climate mitigation technologies like sustainable consumption, green hydrogen, sustainable agriculture, and green buildings. These are the companies and individuals who will help us shape and save our uncertain future. We need them, we need to support them, and they are crucial for the survival of our planet. In my previous role as a venture capitalist, we tried looking at businesses to invest in the climate tech space. After speaking to several startups, one of the things I realized was that while the intent of these businesses were to bring sustainability to the forefront, their business models themselves weren't economically sustainable. Their models just didn't justify the investment from a pure capital return perspective. And as I dove deep into the space, I understood the pivotal role that carbon finance could play in bringing early revenues for these business models. Today, I'm going to be sharing some learnings on carbon finance and its importance in climate mitigation and adaptation. So what is carbon finance? Carbon finance is a general term applied to resources provided to projects that are generated or expected to generate greenhouse gas emission reductions or removal. Once the amount is quantified and verified, they are issued certificates which are then tradable on the carbon markets. The finance acts as an additional re source of revenue for different kinds of sustainable projects by creating a commercial value for these emission reductions. This can increase the commercial viability of projects and thus can play an important role in sustaining and growing their business models. So who buys these credits? Typically, buyers fall into two categories. One, large corporations who are emitting carbon today and want to avoid emission fines or potential carbon taxes. And second, corporations that are proactive and want to voluntarily come across as climate friendly to a variety of their stakeholders, their investors, their customers, or their employees. These are companies who typically make ambitious net zero targets. And as I see it, if done right, carbon finance traded on the carbon markets, both regulatory or voluntary, has an absolutely critical role to play. It can help move billions of dollars in funds from companies that are making commitments to reduce emissions and place them into hands of people who can actually reduce the volume of greenhouse gas from the environment. To give context, India and Southeast Asia alone need $2 trillion worth of investments over the next decade to build sustainable infrastructure that can help cut down the region's greenhouse gas emissions. As someone who grew up in the post-liberalization era in India, I've come to believe that free markets coupled with the right set of economic incentives for all stakeholders involved is what truly drives radical change. For years, those who are doing good for the planet, whether it's consumers, small businesses, or large enterprises, simply haven't been incentivized to do so. What if measurement of carbon can be standardized across a variety of touch points? What if this measurement can then be leveraged to incentivize green businesses at scale? That would add billions of dollars to climate finance bring much needed credibility to carbon markets and also finally reward the do-gooders. Something that hasn't happened in the past in our fight against climate change. To explain this idea further, let me give you a high-level overview of the current carbon market ecosystem. Breaking down the supply side of the ecosystem first. These are typically businesses who benefit from the revenue of carbon financing. Supply today mainly consists of projects in the renewable energy, space, waste management, afforestation, and in some cases, the electrical vehicle industry. In fact, if you deep dive into the numbers, 51% of the volumes have been in afforestation and wind energy alone. This is very skewed and benefits very few of the folks who are contributing towards mitigation. 
Once we take a deeper cut into the statistics, we understand very few organizations globally avail this benefit. These are typically large Fortune 500 companies or organizations with immense authority and access who really benefit from earning this revenue. Carbon finance and markets shouldn't be an industry of the privilege. What if we could democratize access to many more industries that are enabling the transition to a new green economy? To give an example, doubling farmer income has been a big promise of the current regime. What if we could incentivize farmers to practice sustainable and regenerative agriculture? One that can absorb carbon through biochar-based sequestration. We could add a revenue stream for Indian farmers who are perhaps already ahead of the curve in practicing sustainable farming. Going forward, what if we could get folks innovating in energy efficiency, green cement, sustainable fashion, carbon removal technologies such as direct air capture to avail carbon finance as an additional revenue stream? Wouldn't that promote green growth? While I agree that long term businesses shouldn't be dependent on carbon revenue as a key item on their balance sheet, leveraging carbon finance in the initial days is quite important to spur innovation. It gives innovative startups a revenue stream to sustain themselves while they explore ambitious ideas and newer business models. Just like Tesla, can we spawn the next generation of climate and green companies to be trillion dollar companies? Now getting to the demand side of the marketplace, enterprises are the ones who typically buy these credits. They do it for either regulatory reasons or voluntary. They do this by measuring their carbon footprint across their supply chains initially try to reduce whatever they can through existing solutions, post which they purchase credits that enable financing for carbon avoidance and removal. Historically, consumers haven't been able to play a role in this market. What if consumers were given a chance to buy into carbon reduction and removal projects? Can we create a movement where the do-gooders are rewarded? An average consumer in the developed world emits about 12 to 16 tons per person per year. Even if 100 million of these consumers across the globe can be conscious about their carbon footprint and neutralize it by financing projects that are enabling carbon avoidance or removal, at an average price point of $10 a ton, that's about 12 to $16 billion a year moving into carbon reduction. This is a significant amount of money mobilized into climate action. In addition, consumers being more conscious about their carbon footprint would drive accountability and stop greenwashing from enterprises. Today, carbon markets are illiquid, opaque, inaccessible, and are governed by a duopoly. These are typically use cases ripe for decentralized finance and distributed ledgers to solve for. Crypto has in fact spurred a revolution in many industries. Lending, gaming, and creator economy are a few examples. Early beneficiaries and com community contributors have been financially rewarded for staking assets to provide liquidity or playing turn and growing an ecosystem. Why can't we leverage these nascent, fast-growing crypto concepts and take it to the climate world? One, where consumers are finally given a chance to vote with their dollar. A chance to earn through yield or token rewards in return for neutralizing their impact and financing carbon reduction. By linking the carbon markets to the crypto or DeFi ecosystem, we are not only adding credibility, but are also ensuring transparency and accountability for every dollar or rupee in. This sounds a bit ambitious, but the tools are in place to take this bold experiment. Blockchains are becoming faster, more secure, and with the entire Web3 ecosystem being built, bringing this to the climate ecosystem is a possibility this decade. The carbon financing industry has had its challenges with carbon markets having its own set of problems that have come with it in the past. However, with more regulatory clarity, accelerated interest from governments, and various innovative technologies spawning, I'm optimistic that we can solve some of its imperfections. First, double counting and lack of transparency. An issue where supply side folks counted their GHG reductions twice plagued the carbon markets in its first decade. However, with distributed ledgers coming of age via public blockchains such as Ethereum and Matic, recording carbon avoidance and removal on-chain is a very real possibility. Second, additionality and permanence. Whether or not carbon avoidance or removal really happened when a credit was issued was a big bone of contention in the previous decade. However, with breakthrough innovations in geospatial technologies, hyperspectral imagery, and improvements in IoT sensors, tracking real-time impacts of reduction and removal is now plausible. Whether it was the dot-com or the clean tech era, or more recently crypto, every new innovation cycle goes through its peaks and troughs. But innovators and technologists for generations have 
overcome problems collectively. The climate problem needs at least hundred billion dollars a year, and the world needs all hands on deck to avert a climate disaster. No single solution is adequate to correct our course and avoid global temperatures rising above 1.5 degrees Celsius. But I believe carbon financing is one tool that can help accelerate solutions that mitigate and help adapt to climate change. Carbon investments must work alongside aggressive emissions reductions and removal measures, not replace them. When done right, such a market can provide a price for carbon with a high degree of confidence and integrity beyond the prices at which carbon credits are traded today. And the best part is, in the coming years, you as a consumer can enable this movement and finally feel empowered. Empowered economically and empowered to have a real impact on mitigating climate change. Thank you.